Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books, and I'm here with another installment of my Try a Chapter Unhaul project. So, through the course of this last year, I've been, you know, going through my bookshelves and finding books now and then that I'm just not really interested in reading anymore. Um, but I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm really pretty much excited about everything that's left, which is a good thing. But there are still a few lingering books that I'm like, do I or don't I? So I decided the last 10 days of May, I am going to pick a book off my shelf that I'm questioning my interest in it and try a chapter, like try the first chapter, um, explore Goodreads reviews, um, just flip around in it and see if I really truly am excited to read it in the near future or if it's one that I should just let go. So this is day five. So far I'm four for four with the unhauls. I know, crazy, but I think my luck's gonna run out soon. Uh, today's book is America's Dream by Esmeralda Santiago. This is a book uh, that starts out in Puerto Rico. Um, a woman that is, she's got a married boyfriend, a 14 year old daughter who is not all that impressed um, with her, an alcoholic mother. And she ends up going to take a job in New York um, to work for a family there. She works in a hotel in Puerto Rico and she's going to work for a private family in New York. So many of you have heard me rave about Esmeralda Santiago. Her biography, trilogy, memoir, biography, whatever, uh, When I Was Puerto Rican is the first in that trilogy. These three books, I absolutely adore them. They're like my top 10 favorite reads, probably, the, the series. So, I wanted to read her fiction as well. So, I picked up Conquistadora last year, I believe, or the year before, pretty recently. Buddy read it with a couple friends, and oh my goodness, it was not for me at all. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> the um, familial sexual exploits and power struggles? No. No, 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 no. It just did not work for me. So, I'm hesitating. I'm questioning uh, whether or not I'm afraid I will not like this either. So, it might be a case of an author where you like one genre, for lack of a better word, of their writing, but not the other. That's what I'm wondering here. So, I am going to explore this one this evening and check back in with my decision. Are you in trouble, Chicky? <laughs> Helper, Mama. Did you help with the laundry? Hello. So, I decided to just go ahead and unhaul this one. I read a few pages of the first chapter, not even the whole chapter. But I think the problem is that I loved her nonfiction so much, and I really did not like, like I still have PTSD from that fiction book that I read of hers that I DNF'd even though I didn't want to. I wanted to like love everything she writes. And I think I just don't want to ruin the happy glow. Like I'm not going to ruin the happy glow of how much I love her nonfiction. I will never do that because those books are so amazing. They're brilliant. But I just don't want to dull the glow any by reading something that I find mediocre. And I'm getting a, a mediocre vibe from this. So, I'm just going to unhaul it. 
And now I'm five for five. And I'm supposed to get to 10. Um, I don't think the second half of this is going to, I gotta do some weeding today. That is really bothering me. <laughs> or I gotta quit standing here when I film. <laughs> anyway, that was the end of the books that I have been thinking about unhauling. So, oh dear. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a struggle to find any to consider to unhaul from now on. So, but I have a plan. I always have a plan. So let's go over the plan. I have one, two, three, four, five shelves on my physical TBR right now. So I think I'll find my book that I'm least interested in from each shelf. And what do you need, guy? Pico. Huh. Uh, I think I'll find the one I'm least interested in. And then, you know, not necessarily with the intention of unhauling it, but at least reviving my interest, right? So, this is my nonfiction shelf. And I think I'll go with this one. Because... Um, Sean DNF'd this, Sean the Book Maniac, and it interested me enough to get it. <laughs> so I think that's a good illustration of the, a lot of times people, when you unhaul a book that they really loved, it offends them or hurts their feelings, and it doesn't need to be that way because we're all different, we have different tastes. So, um, I'm gonna read this and see if it's a book for me. It wasn't a book for Sean, but it might be a book for me. So, and I'll, it's also short and small. So, I might be able to read it today. What do you need, guy? You're not going back outside because mommy's gotta go to work. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you mama's big man? Are you for going? <laughs> oh, Mama. Do you want pets, Mama? <laughs> oh dear. You want to be on camera too, Chicky? Chicky, chicky. Oh, okay, I gotta go to work. I love the little art pieces. Isn't that sweet? Lunchtime. Hey, so I got the first maybe 16 pages the first little section read this morning this is very quiet and thoughtful so like contemplative or navel gazy depending on your perspective um the woman is a writer her father is um aging he's had strokes and is in the hospital so she's very anxious about that and thinking about you know her grief or her approaching grief because she knows that he's going to die soonish um maybe not with this illness but yeah i think there are going to be birds eventually so i am going to sit here and read some more but I think this one is going to be a winner. I'll keep you posted. Yep, there are birds. And I forgot to mention, this is <clears throat> a memoir. So, nonfiction. The message in the photos wasn't the usual one about environmental sins or planetary end times. The message, if it could be called that, was about love. 
It wasn't love for a pretty girl or a love that placed the beloved on a plinth or in a vitrine. It was not the kind of love that knocked you over, left you in a state of craven hunger, and gave you jittery bouts of insomnia. It neither idolized nor sought to possess. The love I felt in the photos was a love for the imperfect and struggling. It was a love for the dirty, plain, beautiful, funny places many of us call home. I like that. So she's about to pick up bird watching in the city. Hmm. Okay, one more and then I'm going to stop. <laughs> well, I'm going to continue reading, but I'm going to stop reading to you. <laughs> I had grown solitary while waiting for the world to quieten around a story. I had grown solitary as an only child of two aging immigrants who had fled their respective homelands for a continent devoid of family, who had drawn a strike line through their histories, who sat on the land like two potted plants rather than trees and soil. I had grown solitary as a writer whose craft demanded my separation from others. Is that what I saw in the space around the birds? My own solitude? Oh my gosh, that is like the best writing of an immigrant experience I have ever read. Or description, rather. Two potted plants rather than trees and soil. Wow, that's that's good. That's that's brilliant. Oh, that is exactly. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> there are moments when what we need, what will benefit us most, is the power to style our own stories. Like, I'm here for a self-help book, Masters Nature Writing Memoir. Do it for me, yeah. This is the very last one, I swear. I don't want to get all whimsical, he said. Anthropomorphism is a dangerous habit and a hard one to break. I hesitated, acknowledging to myself that it was possible and likely my habits of anthropomorphism were unbreakable. I promise I won't tell anyone. Slowly, the musician nodded. Finally, he said, okay. It's possible that birds may sing just for the joy of it. I don't know why his response made me so happy, but it did. I officially love this book. Oh my goodness. Good morning, world. Oh my goodness. I love this book so much. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Probably be in my top 10. I will give you a more concise review on Friday, but now we have to pick out today's trial. So moving down to shelf two, this is a tough one. So, these two I've heard mixed reviews about. I'm not sure. This one, I feel horrible. It's been off and on my TBR multiple times, multiple times. And then oh, this one, I really do not want to read for personal reasons. But... I know it's going to be good. She's a great writer for fiction. And I know, I mean, I like nonfiction more. Just personally, it's going to be problematic. But I'm just going to rip off the band-aid. Fake testing is done for another year. Chip, chip, hooray. Oh, yes. Beautiful day at the park. Hello. So, we are on day eight of this unhaul project, and I must say, it has been highly successful. Highly successful. So, I have thus far, I'm seven for seven basically. I have, well, well I'll get to that. I I have unhauled or read 
all books up to today. Like, so I unhauled five and I read from start to finish the other two. So I'm seven for seven. So the one I just finished was Men We Reaped by Jasmine Ward. Um, this was, she is just a brilliant writer. This was just a heartbreaking memoir and I think very impactful. Oh, just wow. Um, so today's shelf was my Asian literature and translated literature and then the random Oscar Wilde anthology. <laughs> so there was nothing, I'm still completely enamored with all of the titles of my translated literature. And I tend to really love the Asian literature. Um, however, there were two books that I was feeling quite iffy about. Like I just look at them and I'm just not really interested. And those are these. So um, Miracle Creek by Angie Kim and Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ichiguro. So yeah. I think, have I already mentioned what I'm interested in here? Uh, Miracle Creek is kind of medical. It's the Asian literature, as I mentioned. Um, however, it's also billed as courtroom drama and mystery, which are things that I don't often get along with. Uh, these dots in the cover are pretty cool. They're textured. Oh, and shiny. <laughs> squirrel um so there's that but this has really they both have really high rankings on goodreads um kazuo ishiguro is like one of those genre bending books and i read um those little faber short story books that sean and i were reading two or three years ago I read a Kazuo Ishiguro short story and it's the only one of his I've read and I really was just so incredibly bored by it. So incredibly bored. So I've got a little bit of PTSD about him. <laughs> anyway, in consulting Goodreads, I noticed that uh, Britta Bowler had read both and rated them both highly so I had a little consultation session with her <laughs> and she's told me to just go ahead and DNF this one because it's the medical part just doesn't really come into play and it's a courtroom drama mystery and she doesn't think it's my style. And you know, I just, I'm not interested. I just look at it and I'm not really interested anymore. So I'm going to let this go to someone who's going to be super excited to find it. Uh, and then, this one she said a maybe, maybe for me, um, but she said to only read the first five pages, and if I wasn't completely pulled in, then just forget about it, because if I didn't know within five pages with this one, I wasn't going to want to read it. So that's what I'm going to do. I've already got an unhaul. So basically I'm eight for eight already, but since we're already here, I'm going to try this one out as well. This is going great. <laughs> you can't go outside guy. Mommy's got to go work. <laughs> Hey, so I have read 10 pages of Never Let Me Go, and indeed, I have decided to let it go. I'm not going to bust into song. I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I read 10 pages, double what Britta suggested, and the writing style just bores me. I'm just so bored by the writing style. And the one thing Britta said that would really draw me into this book is the philosophical thought. And I've discovered that 
I don't like reading books that have a deep philosophical thought if I'm not enjoying the process of reading the book. Hello, I'm looking at you, Albert Camus. So, it's Audi. Let's go pick today's pick. Day nine. Oh my gosh. Is it nine? Yeah, nine. Huh? Go so me. So, today we are on this shelf, which is miscellaneous nonfiction. And, you know, I'm really enamored with nonfiction. So, there's nothing on here that I'm not excited about. So,. I'm just going to pick the shortest book, which is this one, Things Are Against Us by Lucy Ellman um, of Duck's Newburyport fame. So I am really hoping there's some serious snark in here uh, because I'm here for that. And yep, the weeds are still growing out there. But it's the weekend after work today, so maybe, maybe I'll attack them tomorrow and you'll get to see it. Okay. All right, guys. I got to go to work. Have a good day, okay? Where's Moo Moo? Everybody wants to see Moo Moo before I go. Oh, there's Moo Moo. Hey, Moo Moo. <laughs> Hi, Moo Moo. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's poetry reading at the high school. I have breaking news. <laughs> Another DNF. Oh my gosh. So, I read the first two essays in this thing and I did not like them at all. Like the first one was kind of boring and redundant, which makes sense. Duck's Newburyport. I mean, I did not find it boring, but it was redundant. <laughs> Deliberately so, but still. And this one, deliberately so, but it just didn't connect with me. And then the second one, like, she is just generalizing to the extreme. And I'm sure it's for comedic effect and a statement, but I just was like, no. Mm -mm. So... And unfortunately, like, this is the only, only book I brought today because I thought that it would take me, like all day to read it and now I've got free time and no book I mean I have one on ebook but not the ones I need to get done but it's fine <laughs> I have plans people when do I not blue sky smiling at me nothing but blue skies do I see can you believe all these flowers came up on their own Beautiful. Three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm finally gonna do something. I'm gonna weed. So I won't be distracted when I look out my window when I'm filming. <laughs> That's better. Whew, what a relief. Look at that. Isn't that just so tranquil? The weeds are gone, friends. The weeds are gone. Happy day. And I have one more shelf to go through for my challenge. Um, and I think um, yeah. I think we'll go with the obvious so, at one point, I thought that I would read all of John Steinbeck's work. I enjoy reading John Steinbeck. But that was years ago, and I don't know if I need to pursue that. And if I do, um, I can read them from the library quite easily. So, I've got a lot of Steinbeck's here. The one on the bottom, I'm curious about the Acts of King Arthur. 
I kind of wonder if that might be like more of a YA. I know they didn't have YA back then, but you know. But no, 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 I'm not gonna do John. I'm not gonna do John. Um, I'm gonna go with O oh, Pioneers by Willa Cather. I mean, another one I was tempted is Brave New World because I just, I don't feel like reading that, but I feel like I need to. And I'll probably really like it when I do, but yeah, I'm going to go with O oh, Pioneers by Willa Cather. This is another one that, you know, Britta's helping me out with. Britta's really helping me with this project. So she read this quite recently and was kind of so-so on it. Something she liked, something she didn't. Um... The things she didn't like are things that I might. So, and also she said she kept on because it was only 160 pages. So there you go. A short book. Possibilities. Let's see how we feel about this one. Hello. So I need to wrap up this try a chapter vlog. It's a day late. I meant to finish it yesterday, but yesterday got away from me. A little bit like the last three days have gotten away from me not that I've been doing anything they've gotten away from me because I've had a severe case of the lazies I don't know I don't know <laughs> anyway I just read the first chapter in Willa Cather's Oh Pioneers and I really liked it um, Willa was born in 1873 and grew up in the prairies of Nebraska, and I think this is reminiscent of her childhood somewhat. Uh, so it's very atmospheric with, um, you know, the vastness of the prairies. It opens in the winter. So I'm really anxious to see what it looks like in spring because, you know, that's, I love flower season, wildflower season. So I think it's going to be good. The, the setting is quite the character in this, I believe. So um, and it opens with a kitten, so there's that. <laughs> All my favorite things. So, uh, I'm not going to finish it today, but that was not the intent of this project. The intent was just to decide whether or not I wanted to read the books. So, this will be a great start for Springathon, for sure. This is, even though it's fiction, it's great nature writing. So, there's that. This was a highly, highly, highly successful project. So I think I read, um, did I read three books? I don't know. Y'all can <laughs> go back and watch. <laughs> uh, but I, it was it the bird book and oh, I gotta go. I gotta go look. I can't stand this. I can't stand not remembering things. It was the bird book and the Jasmine Ward and yeah, it's three. No, the Robert E. Lee was on um, audiobook. I guess I just read two. This was the third. The, I'm gonna read this one. So two read to completion and film. <laughs> Two read to completion. So I guess eight unhauls because that one day I got a twofer. Um, and then one more to read. So 11 books, 10 off my shelf. Oh, so good. So good. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll be back because I've got like dueling vlogs going in my phone and that makes me a little like, I don't know. I don't know. It's all like getting confusing for me. So <sighs> gotta get this thing edited and uploaded. So I'll be back to one vlog. I'm a one vlog at a time kind of girl. So yeah. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back real soon. Bye. <laughs>